help me out. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, let me see. Get my side of that. But I didn't... Okay, shall I press the red... You tell me when I press the red button. It should be filming now. Okay. Yes, it is. They have... Have David Cameron or George Osborne been here to speak directly to residents? Absolutely not. No? No, no. If you could say one thing to the government that represents your views on fracking, what would it be? Stop it. Stop it? Yes. Do you believe the claims... Well, they don't start it. You haven't started it. Well, it's sort of started in Lancashire, but don't start it in a, in a serious way. And could you elaborate a little bit on why, you, why is that bad? Because, I mean, it, it extrapolates out over much bigger plans? Well, there are many, many factors. One is the effect on the environment, and two, in the longer term, the effect on, on the climate and climate change is absolutely enormous. Well, for example, in China now, they're talking about shale gas extraction, and, and in fact, they may have started it. If that happens, if the world was to go for the shale and oil gas deposits, then we are finished. We're toast. Do you believe the claims made by politicians the rewards of frackings will flow to the British people? No, I was in Parliament the other day on Monday when David Cameron, the same day he said that, that councils could keep 100% of the business rate, on the same day in Parliament, Nick Bowles, who, who is the Communities Minister, said that all that money had to be used by councils for building the access roads for the shale and oil gas companies. So, That's big a very deception. Important, very important and you can cite me on that. I've got the tape. I've got the recording of that. Brilliant. So there's another example of deception. Could I just yeah. say one more thing about benefits yes. to communities? Let me give you an example. My wife and I moved to Walkham about 10 years ago, and we bought an expensive house as part of a, a longer-term plan for a pension pot, you know, you get older, we're told to invest in the future. Now, if we were to sell our house down, who knows, who knows? These houses next to this fracking site, would you buy one? Would you invest in one? You no. wouldn't. Those houses aren't worth an awful lot at the moment. Now, m my house, my wife's house, could be down, you know, a quarter of a million pounds. So. So how does that compare with a few piddly little pounds of so-called bribery? It's just, it's just insulting nonsense. Absolutely. Some say if environmental damage occurs, then individuals driving these proposals should be held responsible. What absolutely, are your thoughts? Absolutely, absolutely. Prosecute them. Prosecute the individual. Prosecute the companies. Prosecute the... Get them sign something. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think it's something that will happen on certainly under this government, but it's something that could happen at the European level. That's yeah. something that could happen, yes. In the longer term, it should happen. These issues are not taken seriously by politicians because they think that it, it will serve their short-term ends. Yeah, exactly. What is your biggest fear regarding what is going on here in Balkan and being planned for many other parts of the UK? My biggest immediate fear is, is something that was highlighted in the AMEC report, uh, which was commissioned by DEC, and that highlights a number of scenarios, and one is the, is the high activity level scenario, and that would entail 50 trucks per day, which would mean 100 round, 100 round trips of these huge drilling trucks through this village, maybe on this road, per day, and then three to six years drilling, the noise, that would destroy this village. It would be destruction. And again, I was in Parliament the other day and I raised this with Nick Bowles at the All-Party Parli All Parliamentary Committee on shale gas and yeah. the interaction with communities. And they basically said, as far as the communities go, at a local level, their view was that you had to think of England, the bigger community, and as far as small communities go, well, you know, there will be casualties and they don't really care. They don't care.
Really? really? By the way, the US Energy Secretary recently said he issued a warning on how communities in the UK will have to cope with just how industrial this process is. Absolutely. What you're going to do is industrialise Britain. This is an area of outstanding natural beauty. You've got the thanks. You've got the South Downs National Park in Fernhurst. And why why do they why do they think that the value or the or the supposed value of this oil and gas really exceeds the the aesthetic value of the beauty of the English countryside. I mean, they want to trash that. Where do they have the right to do that from? Where's that come from? Once, once you industrialize, once you bring a fracking pad, right, a well pad, and the new model, by the way, is maybe 20 to 30 to 40 wells per pad, with a water reprocessing plant on, with trucks coming through, then the whole area will industrialise. Mm. They say that they're, mon uh, they're mm. evaluating the environmental risk. For example, they published a document by Public Health England, and uh, what that is, is basically a literary review of the of some of the research in America. There's no hard work put into it at all. I mean, it's, it's just a summary of what people know already, and it's very selective, you know. And anything that's inconvenient is left out. Yes, taken yes, out. yes, yeah. yes. The figures in Balcombe, and I took part in the last survey, I'd say about four out of five people are absolutely against it. They're all sorts of political persuasions, all sorts of professions, all sorts of ages, and they're all against it. Why would you want it here? Why would you want it in Britain? The more you know about fracking, the more you know about this, the less you would possibly want it. That's, I think, is one problem about the anti-fracking movement. It needs more coherence, but that really is coming. You saw, you saw today, you've got a European presence, you've got a pan-European growth of, of the anti-fracking movement, uh, and it's worldwide. Uh, I mean, I'll give you an example. I gave an interview during the summer to the New York Times, and that appeared, and that was anti-fracking. And within no time at all, the phone was ringing here in Baltimore. And I had a woman from New Mexico who rang up and said, you can't allow this to happen. You've got to stop it. I had other people. I had a woman from New York who rang up, and her mum rang up, and they've been absolutely brilliant, helping us on. And so the whole thing is actually worldwide, but it does need more coherence in Britain, but that is growing. There's frack off, there's no fracking in Sussex, there's no fibs, there's this organisation, there's that organisation. And we've had Friends of the Earth have been great, so Greenpeace has been great. It's growing and it will gel and really develop this coherence. It will, okay, it will. Good. Is there a feeling the government have chosen to make fracking an attractive opportunity for energy companies whilst turning its back on cleaner energy that could also be taken to scale to supply the UK's energy needs? Well, I think it's quite complicated. I think there are vested interests, uh, there are revenue interests for the government. Uh, for example, with uh, um, well, for example, solar power and wind power, then the tax revenues wouldn't be anything like what you would get from oil and gas. But I think there's a control issue as well, that uh, maybe there's more control over people if you've got oil and gas, uh, I mean, if people can own their own little wind farm and their solar and things like that, there's yeah. much more power to the people than there is if you've got these great big energy giants who control you and run you. I mean, look at what they do to our gas prices and petrol prices. You know, they control us. You know, they, it's it's part of a it's part of a bigger agenda to control people. That's what I think. And this, uh, and there's a lot of stuff there to unpack. I think that uh, 
Look at Lord Brown, who's uh, Lord Brown is the big cheese in this company here, and uh, he's an unpaid member of the cabinet, isn't he, or something like that? Yeah. And uh, there's all sorts of questions there I would like to ask. Yeah.